everyone and welcome to my channel. If you don't know me yet, my name is Megan Celine and I talk about everything true crime. I just started a new series where every day of the week we'll talk about a different kind of case, but I'll probably only do that for about two weeks or so, but then we'll do a different schedule, but I'll send that out to you guys. But yeah, every day of the week with a different theme, I'll tell you about a case that sits heavy on my heart and spread awareness about it because there's so many cases that a lot of people don't talk about. They're not, mainly because they're not on the news, you know, they don't get the coverage that they deserve and so... I really like to spread awareness about those cases or maybe some that people have forgotten about. Or if there's a case that you want me to share, your loved one or a friend, whatever the case, just reach out to me and I will do my best to do that for you. Today is Wicked Wednesday where we'll discuss crimes and history and today's is, honestly it's really brutal. I'll just go ahead and say that. So trigger warning for some of you because it, it can, it can affect, it, it affected me the first time I read it and it's still to this day, will, it will always affect it's one of those cases that stay with you forever. Um, it's about a 16-year-old girl named Sylvia Likens that was brutally tortured to death by the woman and her children and neighborhood children. But yeah, this was the woman that was supposed to take care of her because her parents had to be out of town. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and get into the story. Sylvia Marie Likens was born on January 3rd, 1949. She was the third child of Lester and Elizabeth Likens, and she had four siblings. There was an older set of twins named Diana and Daniel, and a younger set of twins named Jenny and Benny. For the most part, she was a very happy child. She had such a bright smile, loved caring for others, and she also loved roller skating with her siblings. She also really loved listening to the Beatles. They were just a normal family and lived a pretty normal life. However, things sadly took a tragic turn. The parents were traveling carnival workers and they were going to be on the road from July until November. They took the boys with them, but after saying the girls couldn't go, they decided to basically board Sylvia and Jenny with Gertrude. And I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, so I'm not going to try to butcher that. Gertrude was the mother of Sylvia and Jenny's classmates, and her parents really thought that she would take good care of them. Gertrude charged the family $20 a week to care for the girls and promised their parents that she would treat them as her own. But that woman never had good intentions because the second payment started arriving a little late, she became infuriated and started taking it out on the girls. It started as verbal abuse but quickly changed to physical and she would beat them with wooden paddles and other objects. She started going easier on Jenny because she had childhood disabilities but things only got worse and worse for Sylvia. At one point, Gertrude learned that she was recycling bottles for cash and she would beat her with a quarter inch wooden paddle. A little bit later, Gertrude became weak due to chronic bronchitis and told her daughter Paula to take over the abuse. But for her, that was no problem because she already abused Sylvia all the time. I forgot to put this part in the screen notes, but for example, on one occasion, uh, Paula got into an altercation with Sylvia where she kept punching her in the face until she broke her nose. During her time with Gertrude, she was not only constantly beaten, but also starved. She was also forced to eat vomit, feces, and food out of the trash. At one point, Gertrude burnt her fingertips with a lit match, and often made her bathe in scalding hot water, which, if she became unconscious from the pain, she would slam her head against the wall. By October 1965, Gertrude denied Sylvia access to the bathrooms in the house, and when Sylvia wet herself, Gertrude would force her into the basement. She was often tied up down there while being nude and deprived of food and water. I'll honestly never get over how disgusting that woman was. Sylvia and Jenny's parents checked on them a couple times during their stay, but the last visit was on October 5th. At the time, the parents couldn't see the abuse, and sadly, the girls kept it secret, afraid of making things worse. The following day, Gertrude pulled Sylvia out of school, telling them she had no interest in going and pretended to be concerned, when in reality, Gertrude had banned her to the basement after another beating. What's even worse is Gertrude's very young children and neighborhood kids would join in on the abuse. They would pay five cents to not only see her abused body as if it were some kind of exhibit, but to inflict abuse themselves. I'm not exactly who all was there at the time. I know she did it in front of most of her kids and possibly quite a few of the neighborhood kids, but on one occasion she made, I don't, I'm not entirely sure if she made Sylvia do this or if she did it to her, but a glass bottle was shoved up Sylvia's vagina. And also with the help of young children, she carved the words, I'm a prostitute and proud of it into her stomach. And what's also heartbreaking and really infuriating is the fact that neighbors saw Sylvia multiple times. They noticed the bruises and the abuse and they didn't report it. The only time the school tried to reach out was when one parent of another kid saw the open sores and everything on her. They told the school and officials visited, but Gertrude claimed that she had run away and they made no effort to find her or ensure she was okay at all. 
Gertrude eventually made Sylvia write basically a runaway letter to her parents, and this is what it said. To Mr. and Mrs. Likens, I went with a gang of boys in the middle of the night, and they said that they would pay me if I would give them something. So I got in the car, and they all got what they wanted. And when they got finished, they beat me up and left sores on my face and all over my body. They also put on my stomach. I am a prostitute and proud of it. I have done just about everything that I could do to make Gertie mad and cause Gertie more money than she's got. I've tore up a new mattress and peed on it. I have also cost Gertie doctor bills that she really can't pay and made her a nervous wreck and all her kids. I don't know about you guys, but that broke me the first time I read it and it still does to this day. That same night, which was October 25th, Sylvia heard Gertrude talk about plans to dump her in the woods. In a panic, she tried to run, but Gertrude caught her, dragged her in, and began hitting her in the face with a curtain rod. She was then tied up in the basement again, with her wrist so high on the railing, her toes could barely touch the ground. And of course, in this vulnerable state, they took advantage of that and continuously tortured her. The next day, Sylvia was delirious, had trouble speaking or moving, and couldn't help but defecate on herself. In response, Gertrude stomped on Sylvia's head and had a neighborhood boy spray her down with a hose. One of Gertrude's daughters, Stephanie, tried to make her comfortable by giving her a warm bath and she dressed her in new clothes. Stephanie then laid Sylvia down on a mattress in one of the bedrooms where she sadly soon succumbed to her injuries. For three months, they slowly murdered this poor girl. When Gertrude realized that she was gone, she had the police call to the house and claim that Sylvia had run away but then returned and was already severely beaten. She held the letter Sylvia had written in her hand, pretending to be grieving and claiming that she was trying to nurse her back to health, then handed it to police as supposed evidence. The officers then went into the home, rounded the corner, and found Sylvia's emaciated body lying lifeless on a soiled mattress. Reports said that Sylvia's lips were practically chewed through, all ten of her fingernails were bent backward and broken. She had hundreds of wounds on her skin, all of them in different stages of healing, suggested ongoing trauma. When the autopsy came back, it stated that her cause of death was torture. They soon questioned Jenny and realized things were way worse than they ever imagined. She told them, you get me out of here and I will tell you everything. Jenny soon gave a statement that led to the arrest of Gertrude, her children Paula, Stephanie, John, and also the neighborhood kids, Coy Hubbard and Richard Hobbs. Gertrude, Paula, John, Coy, and Richard were all tried together. Gertrude was found guilty of first-degree murder, and Paula was found guilty of second-degree murder. Them two were both found guilty and sentenced to life in prison, but unfortunately it didn't stay that way. It didn't stay that way for any of them, but I'll get into that part in a second. John, Coy, and Richard were found guilty of manslaughter and received between 2 and 21 years in prison, but they actually only served about a year and a half. So I'll kind of jump back and forth here a little bit, but stay with me. I promise I'll make it easy. So Richard, who's pictured here, he didn't serve very much time, but he died of lung cancer in 1972, so luckily he didn't at least get that much free time. At the age of 21, John lived a hidden life under the alias John Blake. He became a lay minister and would host counseling sessions for children of divorced parents. I'm just speaking for myself, my own opinion here, but that dude never needed to be around children, ever. He lived a little bit of a longer life, but luckily still a rough one. He died of diabetes in 2005. Coy also lived a little bit longer. He died in 2007 from a heart attack. So going back to Gertrude and Paula, in 1970, they were sadly granted a new trial and Paula pled guilty to a lesser charge of voluntary manslaughter and was released in 1971. So yeah, she barely served any time, even though she was one of the worst perpetrators. Another fun fact about her, she eventually had a job at a school, actually, another bitch that never needed to be around kids, but she did. And luckily, people found out about it and she was fired. I'm not sure how long she got to work there before people found out, but... They did find out she was fired. Gertrude, on the other hand, was found guilty of first-degree murder again and sentenced to life in prison, but she had the possibility of parole, and sadly, in 1984, that was granted, but she died of lung cancer in 1990 while living in Iowa, so she didn't get to live too much of a free life either, so at least that gave me peace of mind. I'll never understand how they were able to do this and how she was able to allow those other children to partake in this. It absolutely horrifies and infuriates me. Especially because not a single one of them got a real punishment or anything they really deserved, honestly. From everything I read, she was such a bright young lady and had such an amazing future ahead of her. In loving memory of Sylvia Likens, a granite memorial for her was instilled at Willard Park in 2011 by the Indianapolis Police Department. It has this inscription, This memorial is in memory of a young child who died a tragic death. As a result, laws changed and awareness increased. This is a commitment to our children that the Indianapolis Police Department is working to make this a safe city for our children. 
So here's a few more pictures I found but forgot to include earlier. Those three on the left are Paula, and that picture on the right, the boy on the left, is John, and the one on the right is Koi. Yeah, that, that case is rough. The first time I read it, I just, I bawled my eyes out. It, like I said, it's definitely one that will stay with you for a lifetime. It, I often find myself thinking about, uh, for one, how, how much of a bright girl she was. She just had such a bright smile, and you could just see the bright spirit in her, and I just often think about how great her life could have been if it wasn't for that one tragic turn of events. You know, had she not been forced to stay there, what would have happened? Before I end this video, I just want to say if you see anyone, especially a child, going through any kind of abuse, please speak up or at the very least anonymously report it. Just please do something because it's it's heartbreaking how often this kind of stuff happens. And just like Sylvia, she had she had so many opportunities to be saved and to get out of that situation but nobody spoke up nobody said anything except she had so many opportunities to be saved but everyone just turned a blind eye to it and did nothing please please don't be that person like understand that you could literally save a life if you speak up because this kind of stuff is real this isn't just some random story from from back in the day like this stuff still happens today that's why when I get those comments about why are we even talking about this because it's still relevant it still happens and it just it breaks my heart things need to change now i mean i know the evil in the world will never go away there will always be evil in the world but there's just no reason to ignore the things that you see like if you see bad happening speak up don't just turn a blind eye to it and i mean don't get me wrong i understand being afraid to intervene because that could be a scary situation like if you see a woman getting hit it, it'd be scary to intervene because what if they retaliate on you but at least speak up anonymously or non-anonymously i mean whatever you need to do report it tell somebody else do do anything but especially with children i mean come on guys please don't leave them hanging it breaks my heart how many cases i read daily about kids that whether it, they were failed by cps they were failed by their own parents they were failed by the school i mean it happens constantly and it's 100% preventable. That's that's all I have to say about that. It is 100% preventable. And just in case you're new to my channel, I want to go ahead and say again that if you're in any kind of scary situation or you, maybe you just need advice, a listening ear, whatever the situation is, my email is in the description. You can reach out to me anytime and I promise you I will do the best I can to help. I'm only one person, but like I said, I will do anything I can because that is my main goal with this page. And it's hard because we live in a scary world where bad is bad things are constantly happening around us and sometimes people are too scared to speak up or maybe they're in a bad situation and they feel like they don't deserve better so that's another thing that breaks my heart because if you are in that situation and make and if it ever crosses your mind that you deserve that abuse or any kind of abuse you don't you don't deserve that nobody deserves that you it's, it breaks my heart what this world makes us think is okay and acceptable for our society because, I don't know, women are always expected to be stronger and to put up with more and to go through things. Like, worry about you, you know? Like, don't worry about what everyone else is saying. You just do what's best for you because if you feel like you have to walk away from a bad situation, for one, I know that's a very hard decision to make, but that's a decision you had to make that was best for you. And whoever can't respect that, wipe them out of your life because you don't need them. Um, I know that's a little bit off topic from the case that we talked about today, but I don't know. I, I tend to do that because I'm so passionate about these things. Like, I don't know. It, I, we live in a terrible world. I don't think I can say that enough. So we need to stick together. We need to protect, especially protect the children. If, if you see something that's off or weird or anything, like speak up about it please but yeah please never hesitate to reach out to me i'm here for you no matter the situation and i will do whatever i can to help you just stick together and stay aware of your surroundings and please always speak up if you see anything bad happening